you. So I'm going to give you a bit of background to uh, my interest in this research area. Um, and then I'll talk a bit about the trajectory of work we've been doing with industry, um, particularly through a design innovation research centre that I've been running at the University of Reading. And then I'll talk in particular about um, an area of work we've been doing in, in handover of information, and it follows on quite nicely from things people have been talking about earlier in the session. Um, and that work's been done with the London 2012 Olympics. And then I'll wrap up with some concluding remarks. And if I have time, then I'll talk a little bit about Crossrail. Um, and so um, the interest for me in, in technology really comes out of um, recognising through some work that um, I did with Ray Levitt in Stanford um, that our, our understanding of project management comes out of a world that looks like this. Right? So a lot of the ideas about how we manage our projects come out of this sort of environment in which people are kind of peering into you know, small interfaces into a, into a, into a data set and data, data is very expensive to generate. And yet we're moving into a world that looks more like this, right? where uh, our, our interactions with data are quite different. And so um, with Ray, I, I, we did some work just mapping the kind of uh, generations of um, hardware and software that we've been using on these sorts of projects and thinking about what those changes mean. And Ray has um, an idea about project management 1.0, the kind of um, world of project management, which is about management as tracking and eliminating variance from plans and this sort of new world that we're moving into of uh, project management that has this idea of agile monitoring integrating and analysing information um, on real-time and predicted performance. And uh, in the worlds that I look at, um, and in a sense I see these things overlaying each other, I don't see one of them completely replacing the other, but I do see um, these, these things overlaying each other. And the, the kind of um, projects that we've been looking at um, have actually been the big complex building and infrastructure projects in London. And so um, we've been in a range of the, um, the station projects. We've been in the London 2012 Olympics. Um, we've been looking at Crossrail, which is a big new railway that's being built through the centre of London. We looked at Heathrow Terminal 5. Um, and so a range of these big complex uh, projects where building and infrastructure meet, in a sense. And I've had a research team uh, at the University of Reading called the Design Innovation Research Centre, which has been um, interested in um, the kind of new mode of design in the digital economy. And so we've, we've done a range of work, uh, some of which you would call kind of the science of design, uh, where we've been out working with um, engineers and managers on these big projects understanding what they're doing, sort of field research, um, to understand the cutting edge of practice. Um, and then we've had a theme around playful engineering where we've brought some of that knowledge back into the laboratory and we've been playing with the next generation of technologies you know, offline from the critical path of delivering a major project. And then our third theme has really been about open innovation. So not, not being in an ivory tower in, in the University of Reading, but in interacting with a wider community. Um, that's been a funded research centre, and we've worked with a range of partners on that. And so just to, um, to give you a flavour of the kind of work that we do before I, I, I go into the example, um, we've, we've, we've done a, you know, a range of kind of um, work, and I will talk in particular about the work we were doing with the London 2012 Olympics. Um, so this is the kind of field research we've been doing in the science of design area. We've done a, a range of work in terms of then bringing those people into the laboratory and looking at how you can visualise these large data sets that, that people are generating now on projects um, and walk through them and interact with them and really engage with the, the data that they're generating. Yeah, and then, of course, we've, um, we've been... Um, engaged with others in, on, on this journey. We're not on, going on this journey alone. 
The particular area we've sort of ended up focusing on is this idea of um, digital design interfaces. And this was very much guided by the large projects in London that were, and my advisory board that, that involved those, those, uh, those, those organisations um, that were interested in this problem of, um, of, of where different worlds interact. So within design, across professional boundaries, but also over time between design, construction and operations, between different systems and standards, and between the digital models and the real world. And it's those interfaces that people were finding particularly problematic. And I wanted to step back for a moment because I think in this world of BIM, we, we often uh, end up in this rhetoric that everything's new, but I wanted to just step back for a moment and. Um, mentioned some work that um, we did uh, uh, 15 years ago, right, that was published 15 years ago, um, that, that I was involved in um, with Chime and with my supervisor, Dino Buschlag, and with Alistair Duke uh, in the UK. And this was, you know, in a sense, this isn't stuff that we invented, but it reflects the, the debate that was going on in the community at that time, right? And so I think these ideas about trying to integrate uh, digital data and have a more integrated way of working, you know, have been around for a while, right? They've been around for a, a, a number of decades. Um, but what's, um, you know, and, and if you look at the kind of things that we were talking about in that paper, then many of those things are still issues that we're discussing today. So around how disciplines interact with the central, central model, around configuration management, which is a topic that we're currently doing some work on in Reading, around the perpetuation of design intent, the rationale across stages, the standards, the integration um, within a project communication system, how you enhance visualization of design and construction processes, and the flexibility to extend and customize to project and team requirements. And these are thematics that, 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 that has been a significant trajectory of work on. And uh, um, what I have noticed, though, is that, you know, of course, the tools that we're using to try and achieve these things have really changed. And so when we were doing work um, in the um, early 2000s on Heathrow Terminal 5, they were really trying to achieve this integration of data. Um, uh, but I think that the generations of projects after that in the UK have been more successful at that. So there, is, there has been a change in terms of the technologies that people are using. And particularly with these kinds of um, large-scale, long-term projects, you know, actually this change in technology is kind of something people have to deal with on the project. And uh, we did a little bit of work um, on the railway, highway, and motorway projects, um, um, we just sort of mapped them on a timeline from start to finish, and you, you start to see that even in the project delivery, these, 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 these projects have had to deal with significant shift in technology. So, um, you know, the railway project that we looked at, you know, it was in, initially proposed in 1984, and if you look at the technologies they had available at that kind of time period, they were really quite different from the technologies that we're now using to sort of operate and maintain that kind of railway. And a railway has a, a, life, a lifespan of 100 years plus, right? And so the, the, the kind of change in generation of, the, of techno the, the change in the technology is much more rapid than the, the life cycle of the um, buildings and infrastructure. Even when you're just looking at the, the kind of periods where people are involved in construction, not the whole life of putting the project together. And um, in the project management community, there's quite a lot of work at the moment on the sort of front end of projects and how people think about um, scoping and setting up these projects. The kind of work that um, I and my team in Reading have been doing has really been looking at the, um, the, the end of the project, so how people integrate all of the information from the project and then hand it over to owners and operators. And this is the area that we did some work with um, in the um, London 2012 Olympics. Um, and I apologize that the writings uh, uh, come out too small for you to see, but, th but that just tells you the research 
the research methods and the approach. So we were doing work here in 2011, so just before the, um, the Games in 2012, looking at how they brought information together um, around three of the um, uh, projects. So uh, two of the venues, the, um, the velodrome and the Olympic Stadium, and then infrastructures, bridges and, uh, and highways, the kind of the, the largest site. Um, this is the uh, this is the stadium. The first time I went into it, um, it looked more like this when we were doing our um, doing our data collection. Um, and indeed, they just put down the uh, very symbolically at that point. They just put down the grass in the inside of the the stadium. Um, and really, the Olympics was quite interesting in terms of looking at how a project. Uh, mobilized for a digital handover of data to an owner and operator because the, the, the deadline was so hard, right? I mean, they really had to have the data ready and handed over so that people could use it to get ready for the opening ceremony. And the opening ceremony has the, you know, the most heads of states of any event, um, uh, the opening ceremony of the Olympics, so, so it's a pretty major thing to get right. And this is the